Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be doing a fresh install of Arch Linux onto our PC. So let's get started. This might be a part of a multi-part series that I'm putting together where we install Arch Linux onto our PC and add all the functions later on. In this video, we're actually just gonna get the install booted and into your GUI environment. Now, if you didn't know, Arch Linux doesn't have an actual installer. Everything you do is manual and you have to put it together yourself, which is good and bad. I mean, it allows you to learn a lot about Linux. So if something breaks or something doesn't work, you would have to figure it out. Say like, if I can't get an IP address, that's probably because you're missing DHCP client or network manager or something like that. Or if you don't have a boot up screen when you're booting the computer, that's because you didn't install Plymouth, you know? Stuff like that allows you to learn more about the Linux environment and also about computers itself. The downside is because there's no installer, everything has to be done manually compared to say Ubuntu or Debian where the installer would just install all their programs for you. Anytime in this guide, if I'm going a little bit too quick, you could always just pause. I'm gonna have the commands down on the bottom with like a little lower thirds or something like that so you guys could follow along. I'm gonna try to keep this video as clean as possible, not do many jump cuts unless it's like loading or downloading something. Also, I will be installing this onto the Odyssey X86. If you haven't seen that video, I have a link right over here about this computer as well as using Ventoy and that's another video I put together where it's a multi USB bootloader to allow you to boot multiple operating systems or installers so let's begin the first thing I did is jump into my BIOS and I am gonna boot on my USB drive now there are probably other computers where you could just hit F7 or F10 or something like that and it'll jump you to the bootloader I just went through my BIOS just to double check stuff but yeah here you go I'm gonna select the boot and it's gonna jump me right into Ventoy now you can see I have double couple of ISOs in here, but we're gonna be using Arch Linux, which is the latest version right now. And we're gonna jump into the install medium. Okay, on first boot, this is the screen you get. And the first thing you need to do is figure out which hard drive you're gonna be installing this in. So let's use F disk dash L and it'll list all the hard drives here. And as you can see, the top one is uh, 58.24 uh, gigs, which is a 64 gigabyte uh, EMMC on there. Then I have the 32 gigabyte USB and then it creates multiple partitions. But the main thing we need to know is don't touch the Ventoy or the USB flash because that's what we're booting from. And then the hard drive that you need, it could be either SDA or NVMe or whatever it is. I'm gonna be installing this into my uh, internal EMMC on the Odyssey. So we're gonna be using MMC BLK. Now the first thing you wanna do is F disk slash dev slash MMC BLK zero p well there's no partition i'm just going to use the zero and once you jump into it you want to delete all the partitions i mean you could leave them if you know what the previous install was if it was another linux install you could probably keep the efi system or the linux file system but what i'm going to do is delete everything and start from scratch so i'm going to hit d and delete the second partition d again and delete the first partition so i have no more partitions in here now i'm going to hit n to start and create a new partition and it's gonna be the first partition. Default, we're gonna leave that as 2048. And we're gonna do plus 512M for 512 megabytes for the EFI drive. Do you wanna remove the signature? Yes. Now I'm gonna change the type of that because we need that to be EFI. So I'm gonna hit T and you could list all the types by hitting capital L. And once you find the one that you need, which for us is number one, and you can see it's EFI, I'm gonna hit Q to drop out of this list and hit one to change that to EFI system. Now I could create a second partition and that's gonna be where my root file system is. Now at this point, you could decide if you want swap drive or not. I tend to don't create a drop, swap drive into partitions anymore. I just create a swap file inside the root directory. That's how I do it now. But you could always create a swap partition here, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna do N, the default partition, partition number two. I'm gonna use that as default and just hit, keep hitting enter. So I'll use the rest of the size hit yes and this is going to be a linux file system so we don't even have to change anything we just leave it like that once you're done you hit w to write and you are set now we have to format the drives so i'm going to do mkfs that fat dash f32 slash dev slash mmc blk 0p1 so that's partition one now what i did was um i'm going to format it as fat fat 32 table to the device MMC BLK partition one. Once that's done, we're gonna format the second drive, which is mkfs.ext4 slash dev MMC BLK 0p2. 
Now it's going to format the second partition and we are we are done with this part. We have our file systems, everything all set up. Next up, we will have to set up our internet. Now, because I have ethernet connected, I do have internet. If I ping Google, it's going to be available. But if you are on Wi-Fi and you want to set that up, you would use IWCTL and that will give you the commands to like, like if I was to tell you help, you would basically do station WLAN zero, whatever it's called, connect and then whatever your Wi-Fi name is. And then you'll be able to connect through Wi-Fi. But since I'm on ethernet, just for faster downloads, I'm not gonna do that part. Next up, we will have to mount the second partition. So we're gonna do mount dev MMC BLK 0P2 to MMT, to slash MMT. So it's gonna mount that to that folder. Now we could do pack strap MMT, and then we want base, Linux, Linux dash firmware, and nano, some sort of editor on there. Once you hit enter, it is actually gonna load everything into your second partition, and you basically have the base system installed. And this process, I think, only takes about one minute, depending on how many stuff you want. Now, if you want Vim instead of nano, you could do that as well. It's just up to you. I prefer nano, but again, it's up to you guys. Once this step is done, uh, we would have to generate our FS tab table, and then we could ch root into the environment and start installing everything else. All right, there we go. It actually took about a minute and 17 seconds to get complete everything, so it wasn't too bad. Now we would do gen fs tab dash u slash mnt slash mnt slash etc slash fs tab. It's going to create the file, whatever you had in mount, to mount esc and then creates a fs tab file. And that's the result of that file, which is your UUID for your hard drive. Now we could actually jump into the environment. So arch ch root mnt. And there we have it. We are in our arch Linux install. Now, the first thing you want to do is password. Change the password because there is no password. So you can't even log in if you want to in the future. So we will add our password in here. Next up, we would have to create our local gen. So nano etc locale gen and in here look for your location now i'm in us and you're gonna have to remember this for the future so you don't lose sight of this so i need e n underscore us right here utf8 uncomment that part exit out of this yes save the file control x and then y to save the file you do local dash gen and it's going to generate that now we're going to also now export this into a config file, a local config. So we're going to do echo en lang equals en underscore us dash utf dash eight with the caret. And we're going to do etc locale dot conf. Now, since we're in the environment and we can't reboot the computer to get that, we're going to have to export this so we have it right now. So export lang equals en us dot utf dash eight. Now we're gonna have to set up our time as well. So we're gonna do time date ctl, and we're gonna do list dash time zones. So you can find your time zone. Now I'm in New York, so I'm just gonna look for New York. Now as soon as you find the location that you're at, just hit Q to drop out of this, and you would do time date ctl set time zone and you will have to type it out the way you see it america slash new underscore york and there i have my time zone set up okay so now we set up our locals our time zone we have to set up our host so whatever we want to call the computer what i'm going to call this is a uh, workbench so i'm going to echo workbench and pipe that into well not pipe carry that into uh, append Oh, I can't even think of the word. Append that into etc host name. And once we're done with that, we also have to set up our host file. So we're going to nano etc host. And in here, we will set up 127.0.0.1 as local host. One, two, oh, colon, colon for IPv6. One local host. And then 127.0.1.1. And we're going to set this as workbench. And there we have it. We have our host files, 
uh, language, um, time zone. That's basically all set up. Now we have to do our bootloader, okay? So as far as our bootloader goes, we would do make dir boot EFI, and then we will mount our dev MMC BLK partition one, P1, to boot EFI. Now here, we would now have to install pacman s grub and EFI boot manager. And it's gonna ask me to install six megabytes of stuff. Let that go. And now we could install our boot manager. Here we're gonna do grub install target, which is x86 underscore 64 dash EFI and boot loader ID, whatever you want to call this in the BIOS. You don't have to even set this at all, but I'm just going to call this arch and EFI dash target. And this one, we will have to set that directory that we had before, which is boot slash EFI. The word is not target, my mistake. It's directory. If there's no errors, it would say no errors reported. And the next thing we have to do is grub dash mk config dash o slash etc grub slash grub dot config. And it's gonna generate the config file. Sorry, boot. Now, if you're running into an issue where you're not able to boot, which this computer has this issue, uh, my other laptop and stuff like that didn't, um, we would actually have to go into the boot folder. It actually can't see it in your BIOS. And this is what you need to do to fix it. Go into your boot folder, go into EFI, and go into this EFI folder. And you can see how it says Arch. We have to actually make a folder called boot. And in, we're gonna change our directory to Arch, okay? And here you see how it says grub x64.efi. We have to actually copy this, period, period, slash boot, to that boot folder we just created, and call it boot x64.efi. And that should allow your BIOS to detect the boot. Now that we are done with this, we are ready to set up Xorg and we are ready to set up your GUI environment. So I'm gonna do pacman s capital S, Xorg. And this will actually take a minute or two. And then here you could actually decide what desktop environments do you want, whether you want uh, GNOME, XFCE, KDE, whatever you want. I'm gonna be going for GNOME. It's a little bit heavier, but that's just a default operating, default desktop environment that I wanna go with on this install. So as soon as this is done, I am gonna jump right into that and do pacman s gnome and let that install with all the defaults. It's gonna take about two gigs of data. There's also gnome extras that you might wanna install that will give you a little bit more control over the gnome environment, but gnome itself is fine just for this little thing that we're doing together. And this is probably the only longest part of the install because you're essentially installing 500 files on here right now and you're downloading off the internet. All right, so there we have it. And the last step we need to do is actually enable the login manager and network manager so we have internet when we log in. So we're gonna do this with system CTL enable GDM and system CTL enable net work manager. Now keep in mind those are caps with the N and the M so you would have to do that. Oop, typed in system wrong. There we have it. We are done with this and we could actually hit exit and reboot the system. Okay, now popping back into the BIOS, you might want to set up your boot and you see how I named it Arch. That's what we're going to be booting from, but here we go. So I'm going to hit okay on that. Boots right into my grub, loads everything here. And there we have it. It's, it's going to boot into our operating system. Yeah, that wasn't too bad at all. Now, the username is going to be root. And I would recommend a couple of things is, first thing you want to try is to set up a new user and also install sudo so that user has the ability to go into super user mode. And as well as installing all the applications that you want. But ultimately, this is it. The desktop is working. This is a fresh install of Arch Linux. And if I was to go into system monitor, um, let's see, it took a uh, full 1.2 gigs to boot, which is a lot. And if I was to see the file system, it used up about five gigs, 5.1 gigs of available space to get a fresh install of Arch Linux. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button. On the next video, I will probably be more user management stuff like creating brand new users, installing Plymouth. So we have a boot up screen, um, getting um, other stuff working that you would want to get working like multi-libs and stuff like that. If you guys enjoyed this type of content, let me know down in the comments below because there's other installers that I could also do like uh, Ubuntu Core or stuff like that. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.